program manager there for gaming. I look after the gaming catch up portfolio. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you today about being catch up portfolio management at Spinner. Um, and what I want to talk about really quickly is around how to create structure um, an agile portfolio structure and how to do that where it complements the agile culture you've got in place. And really quickly, um, just to describe the agile portfolio management. Agile portfolio management is effectively a framework that wraps around um, agile at scale and it's there to sort of enable lots of different departments and teams, products, people, partners and suppliers. And it's a way to help bring some structure toward that and build visibility. Because I'm sure if you're doing agile, you've experienced it. Once you start to scale it, it's very hard to visualize what's going on, and where, where people look to, and also answer those difficult questions to these stakeholders. So we'll just have a quick look at sort of traditional program management, and where that was, and then where we've come to agile portfolio program management. <coughs> so traditional program management centers around a lot of structure, so as you'll be aware, it's normally the implementation of governance and control, and that consists of go-no-go gates, uh, large pieces of work, steering boards, risk boards, governance boards, large plans that don't always often deliver value. And it's generally there to slow people down um, so that we can understand what's going to happen and when. So agile program portfolio management is a bit, it's a lot it's very different to that. The idea essentially is to enable the speed Intuitive to traditional program management. So the way I look at the role of program management is in Agile is that you're a certain leader. So it's a bit like a scrum master but at a larger scale. Um, it's about finding that leadership at a wider scale. Um, it's acting as an enabler, so removing blockers from the team so they can get what the work they need to do done. And it's planning for value and enabling the flexibility to change that plan rather than following a structured plan. Um, it's about creating and encouraging autonomy. That's really important. Uh, creating visibility across the whole portfolio and also bringing those moments up where you might need to pivot or persevere. So, effectively stop investing or change direction. And that's quite difficult sometimes when teams are head down and motoring towards business goals. So, we'll just talk about the key functions of a portfolio structure. It's about providing strategic alignment managing the inflow of initiatives. So rather than looking at things as projects, we tend to call them initiatives. The reason being is that a lot of our initiatives, they don't end when the work stops. They generally turn into products. And that's, and that's really important that we see those as sort of living things rather than something with an end date. It helps as well at a business level because from an investment perspective, often so many times you finish a piece of work and, and, uh, and say, well, so that's it, it's done, but actually it's gone into service, it needs to go, and so on and so forth. It's acting as a focal point for information reporting. So I imagine some of you have challenges in terms of dealing with senior stakeholders and when is this going to be delivered? What's it going to, what value will it give you? When are we moving on to the next thing? So it's really important at that portfolio level to provide um, mechanisms to do that. Um, it's about stakeholder management, communications. We're really looking here, we've got some, some good stakeholders, we've got some good executive management that understand that child, but nonetheless, they never stop asking questions and the idea is to as a portfolio manager or program manager to shield the team from that and um, make sure that information flow is getting to the right people. It's about identifying issues and blockers. It's about trying to see the problems before they occur and impact the teams. When blockers arise that aren't within the sort of gift of the team to resolve, it's about being there as a function to help remove those. Um, resource management capacity. That's that's quite difficult controversial and agile. So many people will say, how can we size this work up? What resource are we going to need? So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. And it's about identifying and measuring value. So in that portfolio structure, it's looking at the whole life cycle and understanding in that sort of discovery process, how can we define how we'll measure and then also create moments when, when you do measure. It's about getting cross-tried ways of working. So building in generic principles that help produce information like ticket sizing and metrics and reporting and things like that. So lots of different little processes that help get, get us what we need at the portfolio level but don't need the teams. And also working with third parties and creating strategic partnerships, which 
you can, it can be quite, quite challenging if you're already at our company and you're working with companies that work in water form or ITIL, that can be that can be quite difficult. So as a portfolio manager, it's sort of my job to understand who is having issues with that and how can we start maybe a development or an improvement to that with those partners. Okay, so what we're going to do is we just have a look at a few of these things that I've talked about, the challenges that we've had, and then look at the solutions. So, so the challenge one that I wanted to talk to you about today was providing strategic alignment and managing new flow initiatives. So how do we do that? We have a pretty big portfolio. At one time, we could maybe have about 70 plus pieces of work in flight across all of our spots. There's quite a lot going on. Um, the solution for that is roadmaps and portfolio board. That's what we do right now. So what we do is usually led by product in climate tech with a portfolio <coughs> program and technology. We get together, we look at our business areas of focus and our goals, and we say, okay, these are the things that we know we need the teams to work on. And then what we do is we let the teams look at that with the product owners, and then they slice that into work and produce their roadmaps. And, and this is where autonomy comes in. It's, it's really important that you let the squads drive that because they're living and breathing all the time. What's important from a portfolio perspective is, is that you deliver the direction and make sure that's clearly communicated um, to help influence the roadmaps and make sure we're moving in the right direction. So many times you'll see teams that just are working on the wrong things and there's no strategic direction, you're like one team delivering something and another and it never meets up at any point um, and that's probably the worst thing for them. So we do it as a cognitive exercise and we bring that together at the start of every quarter, just to reaffirm the strategic direction of moving in and make sure that it's focused. So, there's a, a small example of a bit of a roadmap there. We use a tool at the moment called Roadmonk, it seems to work well for us. You can integrate it with Jira if you want, and it's usually just an epic level um, roadmap that looks at the current quarter and forecasts into our sort of quarter after that, usually, depending on what we've got going on. So, then how do you keep the alignment through the quarter? That's that's one of the challenges. Um, how do you how do you visualise that portfolio? It's really important that you visualise the working flow, just like you do on scrum boards or Kanban boards. Um, so we so we, we created a portfolio board, and what that does it acts one as a huge information radiator. So it's centre it's central in our tribe. It's there. Anyone can walk up to it and have a look at it. And we also have uh, a walk the board session. So what's really important about just not just having the board, and you'll know this if you do any stand-ups around the physical boards, is you make it interactive as well. So the team's own this board. It's my kind of role to make sure it's being kept up to date and look at the right things are on there. The teams own it and they keep it up to date. And they'll come along. And every two weeks we have this session that's called the Walk the Wall, catch it. And um, what we do is we get around and there'll be all the different squads. Uh, scrum Masters, VAs, anyone can come to this session and it usually consists of our main stakeholders. So you'll have maybe our head of product, our head of tech, our head of engineering, uh, and so on and so forth. And we just get around and we talk about the key things we're working on. And what we do is we sort of call out any issues with that. So if you need resources, if you've got blockers, if you're not sure it's the right thing to be working on, it's a good forum to just get everybody in the right place to do that. Now technically, every, you know, we should know this every day because we're always coming to each other, stands up some things. It's just a good place to sometimes bring people together and it just creates really good alignment across the tribe and get the things that we're to date. So just a really quick glance at the portfolio wall. We've got our sort of our roadmaps here, our future stuff that we're going to work on, and then we've got our quarter. So these are the things that we plan to do. So sort of like a map one. And it's broken down by our different squads. Um, and then we've got our inception, so that's part of our process for some things. We've got through sort of a, a lightweight inception, delivery done in the last four weeks, um, because that part tends to get clogged up. And then we've got value delivered. So what's good is it gives us a place to put these things and remember to go back and talk about what did that deliver, what value did you measure, that often comes up in, in the war war. And then also at the end we've got delivery efficiency. And that's basically our metrics that measure our squads and how their throughput was, uh, their velocities and things like that. So that's, it's really handy because it gives you a big holistic picture of what's going on across the tribe. And you can literally go into that at any point you want um, to see things. So it's really good for stakeholders. Also, when teams are working together and they've got dependencies on each other and they need to align their roadmaps, 
they can go up to that and interact with it. So it's difficult when sometimes someone's boards up one side of the area and you're probably not there. So, so yeah, so that's our portfolio wall. Just a quick snapshot view of this. So these are the cards that we've got on the wall. So we decided to bring a bit of structure to our card as well. So if you want to find out a bit more information, the idea is if you walk up to the wall, you'll be able to see what the initiative is, roughly the size of it, target dates, if there's any hard dates on there, um, when we're going to measure it, um, and also a bit of a hypothesis statement around your result in and things like that. And then also this just gives you a bit of status of what phase it's in and a bit of a progress bar. So then we'll look at the next challenge. Um, which is which is an interesting one. So it's acting as a focal point for information and reporting. So sometimes it can be a bit controversial reporting that child. People say, well, you shouldn't do it, things like that. But the truth is, you have to disseminate information. There's always lots of stakeholders and business owners, and even a really agile company like this, everyone wants to be informed. Um, so how do you do this? So for me, it's about finding visual ways of reporting information and the health of the portfolio of what's going on. But well, key thing being useful information. Uh, one thing that we really aim not to do is, is, is have big status updates that don't have much meaning, pages and pages and reams and reams. So this is a quick example of, um, of our portfolio dashboard. And we present this to our senior exec executives every month in a thing that we call Tech Roundup. And we basically, it's a good snapshot view of what's going on in delivery across our portfolio. So, at the top, we'll have our key sort of areas of focus that we're working on, and a bit of the status there. We'll, we'll have a few of our key initiatives that are, are, are in delivery. And then we've got some key risk issues, important dates, areas of improvement. So that might be something that we've actually said we need to work on this. So we might have an improvements program running with a partner or a technology stream or something like that. In the middle, which is quite interesting, is the, is the breakdown of the portfolio wall. So what we do there is we so we relate that data and we can say how many projects we've got, how many initiatives we've got, right? So you know, what's the delivery, what's the reception, what's the story, so that's part of our, our leader aspect of our, of our portfolio um, and what we've done and we sort of produce some percentages. What that does is it, it sometimes tells us are we, are we doing too much? So if we've not got many things in delivery and everything's queued up in the backlog, it's because we're it's because we're concentrating on too many things and trying to context switch. Um, so that's quite handy. And then we've got commentary in the bottom. So that's important. When you do something quite visual, it's really important to give some commentary, key call outs to that. Um, yeah. So just going back to that, what I'd say is if you have to do reporting, it's understandable, but try to do it in the most visual and interactive way you can. So when we produce this, we'll talk, we try to talk around it rather than just speak about it. So give that as a some talking point on just wrapping through 72 project status updates. Um, yeah. um, so yeah, challenge three, challenge three is resource management and capacity planning. So when you're running really an agile portfolio, it's, um, it's it's quite difficult really because you want your teams to work in Kanban, you want them to work in Scrum, and it's really difficult to forecast work sometimes. What you don't want to do is impose you know, lots of planning um, because it just goes against some sort of agile ways of working. And so the solution is using spot metrics to find a picture of capacity and throughput across the tribe. So what we have is we have generic ways of sizing tickets. So the squads are really good breaking down their tickets. So we know that consistently through the squad, our tickets are broke, being broken down as small as possible. This is a nice generic ticket breakdown. And what we do, we track the throughput of those tickets. Um, we'll look at velocity, we'll look at redo work, with we'll bugs and things. So what we have here is basically a tribe-wide graph that gives us an understanding of what that throughput looks like. Um, so you might have Edgar's bingo at a casino, gaming promotions, and, uh, and that's how we can look at that. When we, when we compare that to our roadmap, when the team starts to break out and work at a high level, we can understand if we're providing a more of an issue. We do other things. So this is a quick breakdown of uh, what we're working on across the tribes. This is a tribe-wide view of how many features are we are putting, how many books, tech deposits, and, and uh, experiments. And what this helps us do is understand what we're doing with feature work. Are we working enough on tech debt, resilience? Um, it just helps us steer our direction correctly. And then we look at blockers. And that's really important from a portfolio management perspective. 
what, what's slowing our teams down, what's hindering us, what we need to do. So we track those and we also have to sort of as well to look at those trends coming out there. Um, yeah. So that's how we kind of get a feel for capacity um, to cost the drive and understand what, what work we can get through. <coughs> So just a really quick summary of what we talked about today, just some takeaways, is, is visualise your portfolio. Or if it's a programme, do the same thing. The only thing, the main difference between portfolio programmes, portfolio usually spans across multiple teams, departments, areas, and products. A programme is, is, is usually the same, but maybe just centric to a particular initiative, um, so it might be just a bit of a small scale. Um, don't implement owner's process and process safe. So, Sometimes in an agile portfolio, my early experiences, I try to look out to the market a bit to understand what methodologies are there. So you've got Scrum and Kanban for running some development teams and software development, but at an agile portfolio level, there's lots of information. There's no one framework right now that's sort of proving itself. You know, we've got things like SAFE, um, but um, that's not something that I find very adaptive, it's quite structured. Um, so what I'd say is, don't move to a prescriptive methodology. Understand what your business needs. And for me, I kind of look at it as a tolerance level. How little process can I get away with? Um, which, for most programmers, just one But, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, create a path for escalation to remove blockers. So when I talk about servant leadership, you know, normally what you have is risk meetings and other project managers will come to you and talk about risk. So for me, I find it my obligation to make it to the stand-ups, to make sure I'm there to understand it as blockers. You know, if I'm not getting there, then like, it's important that I do, so I can understand the blockers and be there to support the teams. Because the teams are trying to act for autonomy. Sometimes it's just a bit out of their reach, and that's where portfolio manager and program manager can be extremely helpful. Um, find creative ways to keep stakeholders up to date um, and instill confidence. So do report, do it in a visual way, over-communicate. What I've had before is really typical stakeholders, especially in the early days of Agile adoption, there's been no information getting to them because it seems to contradict the ways of working in Agile. We'll over communicate, we'll do it in the right way. Make, take the uh, responsibility away from the Scrum Master as much as you can so they can get on with doing what they're good at. But what that does, that over communication, it instills confidence and those stakeholders tend to get more confident in the Agile processes. Provide a clear roadmap for the teams review it on a regular basis. So always be looking at that, that portfolio wall. Are we doing the right things? Are we building the right way? And are we building it fast enough? So anything slowing us down. So yeah, in summary, create an effective portfolio management structure that supports your teams, doesn't hinder them. Thanks very much for your time. Cheers. Does anybody have any questions?